If you saw the last video I did, you saw that I made some corrugated maple here, and I just did that with a modified OG bit like this one. Um, I just took off the bearing and ground the top down so it looked like this. And then by tilting the router on its side, I was able to create that profile and just making passes on it, and it ended up looking really cool. Well, here's the base that I used, and I had a couple issues with it. I literally threw this together just a half an hour, 45 minutes the other morning when I needed it. And I made it so it tilted this way, which makes the visibility a little bit more difficult. Now, you still have some pretty decent dis visibility, but I wanted to build it so it tilts backwards, so you have all this open air visibility so you can really see what's going on. And like most projects, this one began over at the table saw. Now, this doesn't take a whole lot of material for this project. Uh, in fact, it's just a small piece of half inch and a couple small pieces of three quarter inch ply are what I use to build this router or tilting router base. Now you guys have seen me use the blue tape trick before where I put blue tape down, then glue, and then glue a template to it. Well, a subscriber turned me on to using the blue tape between two pieces that I want to double stick tape together. So you put blue tape down, then double stick tape, and then you sandwich the pieces together. And that worked wonderfully. I used fast caps, fast edge, and that stuff is super, super strong. So, but by the time you get done milling up a part, you pull it apart. There's, it's hard. You got to use a card scraper and other things to clean it up. But with the blue tape, it just comes off really easy. Now, once I had all the templates in place, it was just standard milling operations. Headed over to the drill press to drill out the holes. And did profiling work over at the bandsaw. And then came back and cleaned everything up with a disc sander. Now this project is simple enough that you don't need a bandsaw to build it. You could cut it with a um, jigsaw or you could really just make the cut square rather than round. The only part that you'd really have to do is this right here. This slot is for the adjustment for the tilt on the router and that kind of needs to be in that arch pattern. So if you didn't have a jigsaw or a scroll saw, you could use a coping saw as well. Now I typically will make all my straight cuts at the at the table saw or over on the chop box, but with small parts like that, it's really dangerous to get your hand that close. So you see me using the $10 million stick. That's the new one from Fast Cap. This thing is awesome. Now there are some parts on here that are fairly small that need to have a 45 degree angle on one side. Now rather than trying to cut the part to its size and then mill the angle afterwards, I always start by cutting a larger piece with an angle on it and then cutting the piece down to the size I need after the angle's already there. That way I'm not messing around with getting you know anything close to the saw blade while I'm trying to cut an angle on the piece. And again, when you're milling up small pieces like this, it's really good to have a hold down stick. So again, I'm using that $10 million stick to hold everything down. Now to put this whole thing together, I'm using 2P10. 2P10 is a CA gel that comes with an activator, or you can get an activator for it, which makes gluing up projects like this crazy fast. You just squirt on some 2P10, use the activator to spray on the piece that you're going to stick it to, and put it together, and literally in seconds it's bonded, and you can move on to the next step. Now that's the section that I'm going to mount the router to, and to do that I need some holes drilled in either side to run a hose clamp through. Now once I have the holes drilled, I can put the sides on, and with the sides on I'm going to add a little extra security by running some inch and a half screws into the side. Now I'm using my flush countersink with this because I don't want to go too deep. Now before mounting the parts that make this whole thing tilt to the router base, I'm going to add them to the router mount. So when I put it on the router base, I can kind of level everything out and make sure it's positioned correctly. With the router mount and tilting parts done, I just need to mount it to a base. Now the base I'm not going to be real specific on, I'm probably being more careful than I need to be here. 
just going to mark out some positions where it's going to go and then come back and drill some through holes so after I glue this on I can know where to run the screws up through the bottom. Now I'm going to drill a one and a half inch hole and this would be where the router bit would come through if the mechanism is stood straight up at a 90 degree angle. And then just trim everything out with the bandsaw and clean it up with a sander. Now the last couple steps here are to mount the router mount to the base, which is done again with 2P10. Then flip it over and run some screws in. One of the final steps is to add the handles. Now I'm using one inch dowel here and this works really well. It's comfortable and I like to have the handholds there for better control. Now with all that done, I took the router mount back out of it and added the hose clamp to it and that's what's going to capture the trim router in this whole device. So I know some of you are probably thinking, why a tilting router base? Well, the answer is simple. Router bits are expensive and if you have a tilting router base, you can get a lot more out of router bits that you may already have laying around the shop. You don't need to go out and buy a whole bunch of fancy ones. Now, of course, the first thing I'm going to do is test this and play with some ideas. Now, I don't have time to do a lot of that here in this video today, but I will definitely do another video very shortly on all the crazy different things that you can do with this. But I added the router base to a uh, elliptical jig and was getting some really interesting results. So that first one kind of had that wing effect and this one ends up looking a lot like a chocolate bar when it's done. So I'll show you some more tri tips and tricks with this router base that are pretty wild and crazy in upcoming videos. In the interest of full disclosure, they do make tilting router bases for trim routers commercially. Now they're a bit limited, but we'll talk more about that in future videos. I do want to thank FastCap for sponsoring today's show. If you saw anything in this video from FastCap that you'd like to learn more about, you can find links in the description box. Now if you enjoyed this, please like, and subscribe because I'll be doing a lot more with this tilting router base in upcoming videos. You won't want to miss it.